Welcome guys to part 4 of the EM facts for the board series. I am Sajad Pathan and today we shall be talking about maxillofacial injuries again in this fourth video of the series. Before I begin, let us start with a question scenario over here. Two people are involved in a fight in a bar. One of them is brought in the emergency department with a sunken eye and reduced sensation on his upper cheek. While checking the extraocular movements, you ask him to look up and he reports double vision. Which of the following muscle or muscles are or is most likely involved? Superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, superior oblique, none of the above, all of the above. If you look closely in this scenario, we have mentioned sunken eye, reduced sensation of the upper cheek and a fist fight. Take a moment of pause over here and think about the answers. We'll come back to this question again as we move along. Let us talk a bit about orbital flow fractures. Usually these patients will come with injury by a fist fight or a ball hit to the globe or any kind of blunt trauma to the eye. The inferior part of the orbit is the most fragile one and that is where it tends to break. Whenever you are looking at an orbital flow fracture, think of two conditions. Is there any entrapment of the muscle or is there a globe injury? So as I said earlier, these patients will come with periorbital ichymosis, lid swelling or in infraorbital numbness. If you looked at the scenario, it was a fist fight and the patient had a sunken eye with loss of sensation or numbness at the upper part of the cheek. So rightly guessed, we were talking about orbital flow fracture. When you look closely in the eye, you may see chemosis of the conjunctiva. You might come across subconjunctival hemorrhage, corneal abrasions, hyphema, which is collection of blood in the anterior chamber, an ophthalmus or a sunken eye, exophthalmus or proptosis, iridoplagia, a dislocated lens, retinal tear, detachment and or a ruptured globe. As with any maxillofacial trauma, you would like to get a CT scan of the face. If that is not available, get a plain x-ray, what we call as water's view. If you look closely in these images, you will see a teardrop sign on the left side that teardrop sign is due to the entrapment of a muscle called as inferior rectus or it may be due to the blood seeping through the orbital floor following a fracture. In the image given below, you will see an air fluid level in the right maxillary sinus. This is also confirming a fracture of the orbital floor. Before we move any further, let us revisit the anatomy of the extraocular muscles. We have seven extraocular muscles to start with levator palpebrae superioris, the four rectus superior, inferior, medial and lateral rectus, two obliques, the superior oblique and the inferior oblique. The superior oblique is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve and the lateral rectus is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. Every other muscle is supplied by the third cranial nerve and whenever the orbital floor is fractured, it may cause entrapment of the inferior rectus. How do you diagnose an inferior rectus entrapment? You ask the patient to look at the roof. The affected side will not be able to look at the roof. You can look into this image and here is a patient with muscle entrapment following a blowout fracture. A blowout fracture is an eponym for orbital floor fracture. Involving the left inferior rectus muscle, the patient is trying to look up but with ocular motility restriction is clearly visible on the left side. The right eye can be looking up to the roof but the left one is not and the patient may complain of diplopia. How do you manage these patients in the emergency department? 
As I said earlier, get an orbital CT scan with suspected orbital flow fracture. A CT scan will also be able to diagnose a globe injury or a foreign body within the eye. If there is no eye injury or entrapment, these patients can be managed conservatively to be followed up with the facial surgeons in two to three days. If there is air fluid level in the maxillary sinus, I would prescribe them with some antibiotics. However, if you come across a patient with a blowout fracture and there is an associated entrapment of the inferior rectus or a suspected globe injury, you need to consult an ophthalmology or maxillofacial surgeons immediately from the emergency department. Let's revisit the question again and by now you must be definitely having the answer. The answer is inferior rectus. In the next series of slides, we are going to look at two conditions and both the conditions are quite similar and are managed similarly. So let us begin with a septal hematoma. These patients will come with an injury to the nose and when you examine closely in the nasal cavity, you might see grape-like swelling either unilateral or bilateral. Once you have identified the septal hematoma, you need to drain them. The blood is accumulated between the perichondrium and the cartilage which is avascular and if you don't drain them, the cartilage will go into necrosis and will collapse onto itself to give rise to a deformity. We call it as saddle nose deformity. So once I identify a septal hematoma, I would advise you to do an incision and drainage if you are trained to do that. After the drainage is done successfully, pack the nose, prescribe some anti-staphylococcal antibiotics and arrange an ENT follow-up within 24 to 48 hours. If you haven't picked it up or missed this finding or have not drained the septal hematoma, it can give rise to complications such as ischemic necrosis of the septum, a saddle nose deformity, the blood being there can get infected and give rise to a septal abscess. The infection can spread in the neighboring areas and give rise to sinusitis. If spread through the cribriform plate can give rise to cavernous sinus thrombosis and or meningitis. On the lines of septal hematoma, we'll also talk about a hematoma in the external ear. Usually these patients will come with history of a blunt trauma to the external ear and you will see an echimotic swelling which is fluctuant in the pinna. As with septal hematoma, the blood accumulates between the perichondrium and the cartilage. That means it has to be drained immediately in the emergency department. Do an incision and drainage or aspirate the hematoma and apply a pressure dressing. If you don't apply the pressure dressing, the blood will reaccumulate and the patient will return back. Apply the pressure dressing, prescribe some antibiotics and arrange an ENT follow up in 24 hours. This is the picture showing the needle aspiration and packing the ear with a pressure gauze. If you have missed this diagnosis, if you haven't been successful in aspirating or draining the hematoma of the external ear, as with the septal hematoma, the cartilage can undergo necrosis or it might just grow in a disfigured manner and give rise to a deformity. We call it as cauliflower ear. Let us wrap up. An orbital flow fracture can come in with entrapment of inferior rectus. There may be concomitant globe rupture. CT scan should ideally be performed and ophthalmology follow-up should be arranged. With septal hematoma, it will be a grape-like swelling, immediate incision and drainage followed by packing and antibiotics. If you don't drain them, you will get septal necrosis and saddle nose deformity. An ENT or maxillofacial follow-up should be arranged within 24 to 48 hours. With the hematoma of the external ear, again, incision drainage or aspiration should be done, followed by a pressure bandage, antibiotic prescription, ENT follow-up, if you don't drain them, will lead to cauliflower ear. Thank you for watching my video till the end. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would recommend you to hit the subscribe button. Do like my video and put in some comments. 
Share this video across with your colleagues. Stay home. Good luck. Peace.